both column fracture operated through the ilioinguinal approach. The patient is positioned supine for the ilioinguinal approach, most often on a fracture table. The head is to the left and the foot is to the right. The surgeon stands lateral to the patient. The first window of the ilioinguinal is opened by reflecting the iliopsoas muscle and the abdominals in a medial direction. A Hohmann retractor is placed with a tip over the pelvic brim. The entire internal iliac fossa is now exposed along with the anterior sacroiliac joint, the upper portion of the pelvic brim, and the upper portion of the anterior column. To create the second window of the ilioinguinal approach, the femoral vessels are retracted medially. The iliopectineal fascia is detached from the pelvic brim, and the obturator internus is elevated from the quadrilateral surface. The iliopsoas and femoral nerve are retracted laterally. Through the second window, we have exposure of the pelvic brim from the anterior sacroiliac joint to the superior pubic ramus. The quadrilateral surface is visualized with a retractor placed with the tip near the ischial spine. Medial to the femoral vessels, the surgeon has access to the superior pubic ramus and Retius's space. The obturator nerve can be visualized. There is also a possibility for a limited access to the external aspect of the iliac wing by detachment of the tensor fascia latter origin and by detachment of the sartorius and inguinal ligament attachments to the anterior superior iliac spine. For this exercise, we'll use part of the 3.5 instrument set. These are needed instruments for insertion of the 6 mm Schantz screw. We also use the pointed reduction forceps and the Faderbuff clamp. These are the necessary pointed ball tipped instruments, bone holding rod with spiked disc, and three various pelvic reduction forceps. The template serves as a model for bending the plate with the bending pliers for reconstruction plates and the bending iron. Shown is a both column fracture of the acetabulum. The anterior and the posterior column are completely separated from the intact portion of the ilium. No portion of the articular cartilage remains attached to the intact portion of the ilium. There is a triangular segment of the ilium which is found at the lilac crest. Open reduction and internal fixation of this fracture can be performed through the ilioinguinal approach because the posterior column fracture is simple. That is, the posterior column remains in one piece. Additionally, there are no displaced fracture lines through the ilium that cross the sacroiliac joint. In both column fractures, the hip capsule typically remains attached to the anterior as well as posterior column, and the displacement at the acetabular rim is often minimal. The plane of the anterior column fracture as it traverses the ilium is typically oblique to the plane of the ilium and therefore makes a different pattern on the outside and inside of the bone. On the inside of the bone we see the segments of the intact ilium, the anterior column and the posterior column. The femoral head is visible, or at least in almost all cases, palpable through the split in the quadrilateral surface, 
which separates the anterior from the posterior column. A free fragment is detached from the pelvic brim. There is a secondary fracture of the anterior column at the level of the pectineal eminence. The triangular segment of the iliac wing is reduced into place with a farabouf clamp. The reduction is held with the pointed reduction forceps. Fixation is performed with a 3.5 millimeter lag screw placed between the two tables of the ilium parallel to the iliac crest. A 3.5 millimeter drill bit drills the proximal gliding hole. A 2.5 millimeter drill is used for the threaded hole in the intact ilium. The depth is measured and the screw inserted. The screw crosses the fracture line and exits the crest of the ilium. The free fragment of the pelvic brim is now repositioned with the ball spike and held with reduction forceps. It's internally fixed with a 3.5 millimeter lag screw using the 3.5 millimeter drill bit followed by the 2.5 millimeter. After measuring the depth, the screw is inserted. Even though these two fragments are extra articular, their precise reduction is essential for a final correct reduction of the joint. A Faderberf clamp is used to grasp the anterior border of the bone at the level of the anterior inferior iliac spine. This clamp will control the rotation of the anterior column. Pressure with the ball spike near the pelvic brim corrects the medial displacement of the anterior column. It's often helpful to place the king tong on the inner and outer aspect of the bone to complete or hold the reduction. Pointed reduction forceps are used along the iliac crest. The king tong is seen on the outside of the bone with its tip on the intact ilium. The two points are positioned on different bone fragments because of the obliquity of the plane of the anterior column fracture. A spiked disc can be attached to the tip of the ball spike or other ball-tipped pelvic reduction instruments to prevent penetration in osteoporotic bone. Initial fixation of the anterior column is with lag screws. A 3.5 millimeter drill bit is used near the pelvic brim. The threaded hole is drilled with a 2.5 millimeter drill bit. The depth is measured and the 3.5 millimeter lag screw inserted.
A long 6.5 millimeter screw will be started just lateral to the anterior inferior spine and directed just above the greater sciatic notch. The 3.2 millimeter drill bit is used. The depth is measured and the 6.5 millimeter tap used. The 32 millimeter thread 6.5 millimeter screw is inserted. Another 3.5 millimeter lag screw is inserted parallel to the iliac crest. Start for a gliding hole at the anterior superior spine with the 3.5 millimeter drill bit. The 2.5 millimeter drill bit completes the hole. The depth is measured and the screw inserted. The lower portion of the anterior column is reduced by pressure from the ball spike. For this exercise, the reduction is held with a pointed clamp, though this positioning of the pointed clamp would be impossible through the ilioinguinal approach. A 12-hole plate is seen to be the correct length for the fixation from the internal iliac fossa to the superior pubic ramus. It may be necessary to adjust the curve of the plate to match the individual pelvis. The plate is concave over the superior pubic ramus, convex over the pectineal eminence, and then again bent in a concave fashion over the internal iliac fossa. The fully contoured plate is now seen as it will lie along the pelvic brim. A 2.5 millimeter hole is drilled through the distal plate hole for insertion of the 3.5 millimeter screw. The depth is measured and the screw is inserted, but not fully tightened. When the surgeon is satisfied with the final plate position, a 2.5 millimeter hole is drilled through the proximal plate hole. The depth is measured, a 3.5 millimeter screw is inserted and tightened along with the distal screw. When holes are drilled through the lateral portion of the superior pubic ramus and the obturator canal entered, too deep penetration can injure the obturator nerve. The red pointer shows the position of the obturator nerve. Only very short screws should be used over the pectineal eminence to avoid entering the joint. It's not necessary to fill all the plate holes. In fact, several holes must be left open for a posterior column fixation following the reduction. The posterior column fracture site is now reduced with angle jaw ball tipped reduction forceps. The small angle jaw clamp is placed in the second window of the ilioinguinal, just medial to the iliopsoas and the femoral nerve, and just lateral to the femoral vessels.
One tip is seen on the quadrilateral surface, the other tip near the pectineal eminence. 3.5 millimeter lag screws are now placed through the plate holes into the posterior column. These screws must closely parallel the quadrilateral surface in order to avoid entering the joint. The 3.5 millimeter drill bit is first used for a gliding hole, followed by the 2.5 millimeter drill bit. The depth is measured and the screw inserted. The path of the screw is slightly proximal and medial to the joint. On the outer aspect of the bone, the screws fixing the posterior column are seen to exit the retroacetabular surface just above the ischial spine. The final reduction of the articular surface cannot normally be directly visualized. However, for the exercise, we'll open the hip capsule to visualize the articular reduction.